All right, guys, welcome back to Toy Shop. Some of you guys might recognize this sled. This is the phaser we worked on that was sitting for a really long time. We got it running last year, I'm pretty sure, and the kids rode the crap out of it, and they ran it to the point to where now it's blowing belts. So I kind of half diagnosed this already. The reason why it was shredding belts, the case is broke and the motor's pulling back really hard when the clutch engages, which is doing not very nice things to the belt. That's the, the engine case right there. What I wanna do is we gotta pull the motor out so we can get and swap cases. He has another motor here, well, just cases that are good. This right here is the bolt hole that's broke out on that. So we gotta put these cases on that motor, which shouldn't be too, too bad, I'm hoping, because we're gonna still use the top end, the crank, the whole nine off of this motor. We already know it runs. I got a gasket and seal kit coming, so it's gonna get fresh gaskets and new end seals. So with all that being said, we're probably gonna start with pulling this cover off, this air intake cover, and then we're gonna get the exhaust off it so we can start getting, getting the motor on its way out. So it looks like the couple hose clamps. I'm using my metric number two Phillips screwdriver. If you've never actually had a metric Phillips head screwdriver, you, you definitely need to try it. Like there is definitely a difference using a metric Phillips on metric Phillips heads, which these are. Like they fit so much nicer, they don't strip out. Definitely a worthy investment. All right. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to put it back together that way. I might have to take the cover off that's up here in order to put this back together. So we're gonna pop the choke plungers out. Those look like 12s maybe. Yep. When popping chokes out, you wanna fully engage the choke lever on the dash and that'll keep everything nice and tight and you'll be less likely for this to fall apart while you're working. So we got the oil pump cable off and the throttle cable off. All right, now I got two fuel lines on the bottom of the carb. Well, that's a lot of stuff on these carbs. All right, so I think this is like a speedo drive or a tack. I guess it would have to be the tack, huh? This hooked to the motor. But regardless, pop this cable off. Set that off to the side. It's got two different lines that go to the bottom of the oil tank. They feel like crap, like they're super hard. So we're probably gonna put a new line on it. So what I'm gonna do is probably take some vice grips and clamp on it. So we shouldn't leak much oil. I can't see that other one real well right now. So I think we're gonna just leave it. But remember, before we go yanking the motor out, that it's on there. So with that being said, right there's one motor mount, like probably the first one we're gonna take off. All right, the next one is right there. Got the nut and a big washer and a rubber piece. Now the other side of the motor, it's right there. The recoil rope is gonna have to get rerouted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull some of this out and then I'm just gonna tie a knot in it. Once there's a knot, then that'll free up everything that's up there. I'm gonna untie the knot in the handle. Actually, I'm just gonna cut the knot in the handle and we're gonna pull the rope through. So now the recoil rope isn't gonna bust our balls at all. I'm gonna unhook some wires down here. So the motor's electronics are all unhooked, except for the starter, which is starters buried way at the bottom. All right, I don't know what else is on here. So we're gonna try to pull it up out of the hole. Looks like I got a vacuum line for the fuel pump still. We still have this other big oil line. I'm gonna stick vice grips on that now. Oh, I found the wire for the starter. Don't really know how you're supposed to see that. So now we're gonna start stripping this motor down. I wanna get everything off except like the head and cylinder. So I wanna get it down to just a bare motor first. I wanna take this housing here off. So we're gonna start by zipping the recoil off. There, see how the starter motor's coming out at the same time this. All right, so that motor mount comes out with the starter. There's a plastic tab here that's holding on to the, oh, there it goes. All right, I'm just gonna work the belt off. Yeah, just like that. So a lot of snowmobiles have the ring gear for the electric start on the clutch, but this one has a ring gear on the flywheel and this is bolted on here super weird. Oh, I ain't never seen that before. We gotta pop this aluminum pulley off so we can get down here to the flywheel. All right, now we got a big old nut. Now we gotta get our flywheel puller out, find the right bolts to go in there. That looks like it. Try it with the little guy first, see if it'll pop off. That wasn't bad. 
This is just a Harbor Freight flywheel or uh, I don't even know what else they call it. It's for pulling other stuff on cars, which I've never pulled off, but it works good for flywheels like this. Now that's a flywheel. It looks so weird with a gear on it. All right, when I pop them off, I like to just stick the nut and washer down in here in the magnets. And then same thing with this keyway here. So you just, you don't lose it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but see how those are slotted, the bolts for the stator? Those are timed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to permanently mark the stator so I know that it lines up and I'll show you how I do that. So basically what I do is I get a chisel and we wanna basically put a big groove in two spots on the stator plate and on the case. There. So see right there, I put the mark in it. Now that's on the stator plate and on the case and that's permanent and it lines up perfectly. So now I'll be able to get this right back where it was. These bolts on here are Phillips heads and those are not really ideal. So I've got an impact screwdriver. I don't want to round them out or anything. These, you just hit the end of it with a hammer and they twist out. You know, I just remembered, I didn't show you guys at all why we're doing this. Where's it at? It's over here on this side. So this is the motor mount that's on the clutch side, and this is the one that had that big hook thing on it. And if you look, see how you can see this whole bolt right here? And that's allowing the engine to torque towards the secondary. And if you actually look at the, the clutch on this, it looks like it torqued to the motor close enough to the secondary that the belt started to ride up on top of the primary here. These sheaves here need cleaned up really bad. Once we get the clutch off, we'll probably tear the clutch apart and at least clean it. But we'll scotch break these sheaves so that they look good again. But that's why we're doing all this work is because it needs these two cases here for that, that engine mount right there. Everything else is good about this motor. We're just gonna do a little bit of maintenance on it while we've got it apart, like uh, end seals and new gaskets and stuff. And I noticed the intake boots are starting to get cracked. I'm gonna put intake boots on it while we got it apart. That looks like pretty much everything on this side of the motor. Now we've got the fan shroud we wanna get off. Pop the boost bottle off. I wanna make sure that I remember that this is the, the flywheel side. I might run some masking tape around it and write fly on it, or F. All right, there. I know that's the flywheel side. Does it really matter? I don't think so, but I like to keep stuff separate. So we're gonna take off the PTO side. All right, PTO. Okay, running out of big easy things to take off of this. Um. All right, I don't wanna take apart this this gear, the tack gear and the oil pump down here. I don't wanna take that apart till after the primary's off because I'm pretty sure you have to get to bolts that are behind this sheave here. My dad has a, a clutch puller for this, but he's at work right now. So we're gonna to have to wait till probably tomorrow. So I'm gonna set the flywheel side head, probably cylinder and head with the flywheel side reed cage. Try to keep everything together. Oh shit, getting ahead of myself. We gotta do the exhaust next. Wow, look at this. This thing's about ready to explode. You see that? That's the ring. The ring's right there. Wow, this thing's in rough shape actually. Well, maybe maybe we'll have to do a little more than just gasket kits when we get apart. Maybe not, but maybe. Let's finish getting her apart, I guess. You ever just wrench in? I mean, probably if this is your job, probably not, but like, just sitting here wrenching and you'd like catch yourself like working on the same bolt for like 10 minutes. And you're like, hey, I own ratchet wrenches. Maybe I should go get one. That might make my life easier because that's what I just did. All right, now let's take the cylinders off. Oh boy, look at that thing. It like kind of like this up here, super porous. So it almost melted a hole through it. It definitely ate the top of this piston all the way around. At first glance, the rod actually don't seem too bad. Maybe we'll have to check the other one. Yeah, it feels all right. This one's starting to melt the top of the piston here too. This thing's running lean. I knew it needed uh, intake boots, but I didn't actually think it was at the point that it was starting to self-destruct. Unless the end seals are that bad. I think we're gonna pop, pop the wrist pins off and we're gonna put the, the pistons with the cylinders so I can get them both cleaned up and take a look at them and stuff. All right. I don't know how, but the rod feels, the rods feel fine. Maybe just a touch of play. I mean, for the kids, the crank would be fine. Well, um, we can get these motor mounts off now. I'll pop this off. Oh wow, that completely broke. Okay, so I got a broken motor mount 
and a broken case. So I'm gonna have to weld this before this goes back together. See, we got a little dangly bit right there. That's supposed to be right there. I ain't supposed to be done dead broke to did. So uh, we're gonna have to give her the old, the old buzz buzz, get her stuck again. I guess the only thing that's left to do is just get this bolt out and then we'll just wait till we have a, uh, a clutch puller. I don't know if the whole clutch is junk or not, but definitely that back sheave is. This thing's hurting way worse than I thought it was. All right, we're on our way to go to my buddy's house. He's got a spare motor. So we're gonna see if we can find a clutch and maybe a couple cylinders to see if it's any better. But hopefully he's got a clutch for this thing. That's gonna be the main thing. Of course, it's shitty out and it's a good time to ride. And we're working on junk sleds. They should be out riding right now. Another car boot. Got some cylinders. Got one brand new piston in the box. Hopefully that's good. We got another piston. Some extra motor mounts. And we got a pretty good start on what we need. Got a clutch, some cylinders, some pistons. Maybe we can make something out of this. This is just a field beater, so this stuff might do. So my mic is charging, so audio is going to be a little bit different. But I went over to my dad's house and raided some Yamaha clutch pullers. So we're going to see kind of what what works. I'm guessing it's this one. Put some grease on these threads. I'll just kind of go in there and help everything. That popped off pretty good. Now that that's off, we can start pulling apart this whole oil pump and tack gear thing. Whatever Yamaha's idea was for this. I think we're pretty much ready to split the cases on this, I think. There's a little guy right there. Right there, right there. Just trying to keep the crank in the top half, but I don't think that's gonna happen. All right, the crank is free. Now we don't need these cases. Those cases are broke, but we do need the crank. See, we got half moon shim on the double bearing side. All right, got everything apart. Now I'm gonna start, start by getting stuff cleaned up, I guess. All right, so I got the new cases cleaned up. Uh, there was some rust in here on these like steel belts. So I just scotch brighted on them as best I could and then rinsed that out. And then I put some WD-40 on it lightly, real lightly, just to kind of help keep it from rusting while it was sitting here. So both of those are cleaned up. I got all my bolts cleaned up and there's the ring that goes between these two bearings here. But I want to put seals in it. So I got to get this seal off. We're gonna have to get this gear off. All right, that fits pretty good actually. So the only thing I don't like about this is there's no tip for here. Ooh. So this right here is like a weighted end, like on a motorcycle handlebars. They'll put these on there in case you drop it and scrape it, it doesn't hurt your bars. But that's gonna work good to protect the end of the crank. So we're just gonna put a little bit of pressure on this and see if it starts to move. Oh yeah, that's coming right off. All right, so the side with the recess here goes out and the side that's flat goes down towards the seal. Get the seal off of that, wipe this off, but really we're just putting a new seal on it and putting it right back together. This is the first gasket kit I've got in a little box, it's a SPI or SP1 
kit. I really like this. No more like vacuum sealed or vacuum packaged kits. It's a complete gasket kit, gasket and seal kit. So it's got the, the engine seals for each side and it's got all the gaskets for it too. So we'll be needing that more later, but not right now. All right, here's both crank seals. The grease here, we just get to put that back on. So I'm gonna set that here. I'm gonna make sure this seals all the way down so that this gear stays away from it so it cools down. We got that on there. All right, so I slid the other seal on already. Now I wanna take the top half of the case and flip it upside down because I'm gonna set the crank in this side and then I'm gonna mate the bottom half to it and put all my bolts in. What I wanna do first is where the seals ride. I wanna put some, some RTV in there to make sure that the seals will seal up well. Now lightly, I don't wanna goober this stuff in here. I like to do the poke method. So I just slowly go around and poke some on there. I try not to smear it. I just try to dab it on there. It gets a nice light coat all the way around. So that's all we're gonna do on this half of the crankcase, just those two seals. Now, see these pins in here? All these pins, so every bearing has a, a spot on it for a pin. Let's see if I can get one. Right there's one. So right there's those two there. So those need to line up with those pins as we drop it down in. All right, I'm getting everything roughly lined up. You wanna watch your seal grooves, make sure. Just kind of start working each bearing around, see which one feels the tightest. Work it around till it loosens up. All right, that one's in. That one's in, that one's in, that one's in, that one's not in, oh, that one's in, that one's in. All right, so every bearing on this is in. So now we're gonna set this off to the side for a minute. We're gonna go through and we're gonna tap, tap, tap this whole area. Because I can't get around this knock pin right here very good, I'm gonna go on this case half here and tap around it just to make sure it's good and sealed around there. Same thing for this knock pin. I'm just gonna go around here a little bit. All right, um, I almost forgot. There's this half moon ring. I'm gonna slide that upside down into that case this way so that that stays in there and that will help keep these bearings separated and located. All right. All right, now I'm gonna draw these bolts down in and then we're gonna to torque them. So we gotta tighten all these to 15 foot pounds. So, which this torque wrench is definitely overkill for that, but I'm gonna start X pattern in the middle and then opposite corners and then the last two there on the end. All right, so we're gonna clean up this assembly here. There's a ton of grease in it and I don't know if there's supposed to be grease in it like that. This thing's just packed full, which it could it could need to be like that, I'm not sure. But regardless, it looks bad. If I want it right, I think I'm gonna tear apart, clean all the grease out of it and then uh, re-grease it. All right, so there's just the oil pump. I think I'm gonna pop this clip off here so I can get the gear off. There's like a little wobbly washer under there. Stick this in the parts washer. So that just falls off after you get the clip off. And then there's a pin here. It looks like there's only one way it can go. Looks like it can only go in that slot right there. So I'm gonna line it up, try to push it. All right, so I don't have a seal to rebuild that. So we're gonna have to be delicate with that. That looks like it just is in a bearing right here because I can watch it spin. So I'm gonna try to just tap that out. All right, and that came out, just a bearing in there. All right, so we got everything cleaned up. Now we're just gonna reassemble it. This is uh, pretty straightforward. It looks like on this piece here, it looks like you would pull this Phillips head out and pump grease into here and then it would kind of backfill this gear this sprocket here and that's how you would keep this grease so if you have one of these that's probably what that is but because i got it apart i'm going to kind of pack this bearing with some grease because this thing does a lot of spinning and it doesn't have any oil or anything to lube it so whatever we grease it is all it's getting and we got to take our little pin and we got to start it in this groove here the only spot you have enough room to get that pin in there and then after that the sprocket goes on there we got a little flimsy uh our wave washer here, our flat washer, and then we've got our, our snap ring. Make sure that's snapped all the way on there. Now we have this gear here is gonna go on here, but before that, I wanna kinda preload and kind of pack this in a little bit with grease, smear it in the teeth. I think I'm gonna set that on the, let's kinda use this two by four, a little bit of an anvil. All right, so I got that in there till it's flush. I don't wanna get any grease on this surface here, because I need that gasket to seal on there. Now that we kind of got that smothered all over everything, I think I'm gonna try to wipe off some of the heavy stuff where the gaskets go. Set our seal, our gasket on there. So we got our two Phillips head screws in the back and get those on. So now we got this one little washer and that's gonna go right here on the end of the shaft. Then we have our actual oil pump, kind of spin the gear, hopefully to, there we go. We're gonna put all new oil lines and fuel lines on this just because we're already in here. All right, so we got this gasket. He's gonna go there. 
All right, I'm gonna have to turn the motor over to get that to. All right, we're gonna run those in quick. All right, I'm gonna put just a touch of grease around this seal here that the clutch rides on without getting it on the crank. Cause I don't really want grease on the crank cause I don't want any slippage. All right, so we are good there. I think we're ready to slap pistons on this, which that is a whole can of worms in itself. All right, so I was checking things out when I was getting ready to order pistons for this. I was gonna just order regular pistons for it like I do a lot of things. I measured the bore on this just to kind of see where it was at. And I took calipers and I got two inch 892. And most things are in metric. So if I take this and go two inch 892, and then to turn this into metric, you multiply it by 25.4, that turned it into almost 73 and a half millimeters. When I called to order pistons for this, I asked them what stock bore was on this, and they said that 72 millimeters was stock bore. So to figure out where this cylinder actually is at, the difference between 72 and 73 and a half is one and a half. So if I divide that by 25.4, then this cylinder is 59 thou over. This is a 60 over cylinder. Knowing that, I asked them if I could buy 60 over, and nobody offers a 60 over for this phaser anymore. I'm sure they did back in the day because obviously it had 60 over pistons in it. But luckily we had a spare set of cylinders and I measured these and these are stock size. So I ordered just stock size pistons for this and we're going to put these cylinders on. These cylinders are actually pretty decent. There's still hone marks in them, but the bottom here is rusty. So we're going to put some oil in here and we're going to re-hone these. All right, I got the cylinder in the vise. I've got it so I'm not hitting anything here or out the backside. And I'm just going to take some WD-40 and kind of lightly spray it. I've got a three stone hone that I'm going to use. I've got some spring pressure on it, but not a lot. Really, I'm going to try to just get the rust out of it. So I want to go good and slow. I want to go slow RPM wise, and I want to go forward and backwards fairly quick. If you go too fast on your RPMs and too slow back and forth, you don't make like X's for your cross hatches. You just basically do a whole bunch of sideways swirls and that's not what you want. Starting to get the rust out of there. I'm gonna wipe it off and look at it. Oh yeah, that took pretty much all of it off. I'm gonna turn the spring pressure up just a little bit on this, just so it's got more force out. And then respray it. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do that to the other cylinder and I'm gonna wash them and get them ready to put on the motor. All right, so I got my rags packed down in here. So when we put these pistons on, I'm not dropping a circlip and losing it. Open these up. First thing I want to do is check the ring end gap in the cylinders just to make sure I didn't mismeasure the cylinder or anything. I did buy a new wrist pin bearing too because I didn't want to reuse that, especially with how hot this had gotten. All right, so we got pretty much everything laid out here. Got our new ring. I'm going to take this here instruction book. All right, so this says prior to installation, fit each ring into the cylinder bore and measure the end gap to eliminate the chance of ring budding. Acceptance gap, acceptable gap range is 8 thou to 30 thou. If gap is in inadequate, carefully file to the recommended specs. Now that's a wide open tolerance and I don't like that. So I just looked online. It looks like you want anywhere from three or four thou per inch up to six thousandths per inch of cylinder bore. So if this measures almost three inches and I want to do five thousandths per inch, then I should be right around 15 thousandths of clearance. I'm going to take my ring, slide it down in here, rotate it around, take my piston, slide it in, and I'm going to use my piston to square up that ring, push it towards the top. So now I know that ring is good and centered in there. Find the gap, take my feeler gauges. Let's start at like 10 thou and see how that feels. 10 goes right in there. 15 goes a little snug. 16 doesn't go all the way to the cylinder. That puts us at just about five thousandths per inch of bore on the ring end gap. So I think that's good. That means we should have all green lights go for putting this piston on. Now these rings are identical as far as width. So I'm gonna work the rings on. Now the exhaust, the arrow is gonna go towards the exhaust, which is towards my stomach right now. So it's gonna go on this way. I'm going to put the circlip in this side of the piston already. So then when, so when I slide the wrist pin in, I only have the outside circlip to deal with. I don't wanna to have to work past all of this stuff here to put this circlip in. So I got a little two stroke oil on that cap and oil this pin. And we're gonna oil the wrist pin bearing. Kind of slide it together, work it on. Get her good and lubed up. Slide that in the rod. Kind of just test fit this all, make sure this still goes together. Yep, feels good. So I'm gonna leave that there. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, we're gonna leave the rags in on this side still, just in case I happen to throw the other circlip trying to 
get it on there. So before we start oiling this, I want to take some scotch Brite and take some of the rust off of this. It's not really going to hurt anything, but I don't want that rust to come free when it's down in the motor. So not over top of all my clean rags and stuff. I want to make sure the rings are uh, appropriately located on here. Take a little two stroke oil. I'm just going to kind of coat this. I'm using Amsoil Interceptor. I kind of want to give you guys my kind of take on Amsoil. Some people don't like it. I know it's expensive. I really think it's one of the best oils out there. I don't know if it's the best oil out there, but it's one of the best oils out there. And the thing I really like about Amsoil is you can get online, you can find data saying how good it lubricates, how well it performs. There's not other oils out there that have the amount of research that is easily available to get at as Amsoil does. If you're a little skeptical, down in the description in my website, we've got tons of YouTube videos. They've got tons of information, lots of comparison tests. I really just like this product, that this is, is one of the best oils. That little spiel aside, we now have an oiled cylinder. So we're gonna take this cylinder. Uh, exhaust port is towards me right now. We're gonna take, and we're gonna start to slide this over. I got my base gasket on already. Find my ring and gap. All right, there we go. There is one started. All right, so now I got this other piston all the way up. All right, we're gonna do the same thing with this. Gonna lube her up. All righty, we got cylinders on. Time for head gaskets. I might even wipe a little more oil here at the top. If I were to go stick the plastic cover on here and look, see this bolt here? And there's another one hiding in here. So if I look, those two bolts are this outer one and this outer one. So these outside two holes here, they both need these tall nuts. So I'm gonna finger tighten these. All right, now we just got three other nuts and that's gonna go on these studs sticking up here. Just kind of snuggle those up. So I kind of got all these down, snug down a little bit. They're all kind of even. We are gonna torque these, but I just wanna kind of get them all down by hand. All right, coffee break. There's uh, some cool things on my store, like this here pretty nifty coffee cup. If you wanna get yourself some merch, check out the, the description down below. Also, I just got news today. I applied for uh, Cameron's uh, influencer program. He's got a website called Prime. And on Prime, you can buy lots of products for keeping your stuff clean, uh, restoring your machines, stuff like that. This is just some of the stuff he offers. So I now have a code down in my description. So if you go down and use my code, I will get 10% commission and that helps my channel and it also helps Cameron. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, uh, down in the description would also have that. But uh, back to this, let's get these little bolts put in that just help to hold the head together. All right, so all those are run in pretty hand tight. The nuts are gonna be 20 foot pounds and the bolts are 11. I'm gonna do the unthinkable and I'm going to put a short extension on this and I'm going to do it for all of them so they're even. But we're gonna go to 20 foot pounds and we're just gonna send her right home at 20. And kind of half bear hug it here. All right, we're not gonna put that torque wrench away yet until we get the other four tightened up. And then we're gonna go back around on those bolts. So that was 20 foot pounds on those nuts. Uh, I'm gonna put an extension on this also. Uh, 11 times 12, I think is 132. So we're gonna go 132 foot pounds on this. All right, so we got all those little ones torqued. We're gonna go back around on the big ones. Oh wow, that actually went quite a bit. I'm gonna call that one good. Just for shits and giggles. I ain't really getting much more out of these, so I ain't that worried about it. All right, she is uh, torqued and all set. We're gonna go to the intake side. We're gonna put the reed cages back in. All right, so we got our uh, our flywheel side here. I don't remember if I said it or not, but these carb boots here are junk, complete garbage. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that very well. Well, you can see that. They're just super rotted and stuff. I don't know how we got this lucky, but there's so many parts on this part sled that I, mean, I gotta clean them up still, but they look like they're gonna be okay. All right, so I got both of these cleaned up and this one cleaned up pretty decent. There's one little neck right here, but I don't think that's gonna suck any air or anything. And uh, I don't really see any dry cracking. So that is gonna be a good boot, which I need to put a gasket on first. Now this boot here is not dry cracked anywhere. It looks pretty decent, but it's the rubber is peeling away from the metal. 
and I was kind of playing with it a little bit and I've got it to peel way back. He doesn't have to buy two intake boots, but we definitely have to buy one intake boot. So I'm gonna get this one put on all the way and then I'm probably gonna put the cleaner of the bad ones on here just to keep crap out of there. When I got this thing tore apart and saw that the pistons were melting and it had eaten the, the top of the piston there right above the ring, I had talked to my old boss. I was telling him about it and showing him pictures and stuff. And he's like, you know what? The timing might be a little advanced on that. And I was like, well, you know, now that you say that, I almost think the stator was on the advanced side of center. So advanced would be, uh, the stator would be too much clockwise. So it would be too much this way. And I'm looking at this bolt hole here in relation to the slot. So that would be about center and that would be retarded. Right here is where the stator was. And I'm thinking I want to turn it back a little bit. So we're gonna try that on here. I wanna aim for pretty much dead center of the allowable slot. So I'm gonna stick this in here, make sure my little rubber boot is actually pulled through. I'm gonna kind of dry fit this a little bit. I definitely don't want it that far advanced. I'm trying to look at this hole right here. That looks pretty close to center. I don't wanna go too much. I'm gonna put a little Loctite on these just cause I don't want these to move at all. I think I'm just eyeballing for the middle and I'm just gonna lock her down. I'm looking at the middle right here. I think that looks pretty damn close. So now that that's on there, I'm gonna fish all my little parts out of this uh, flywheel. I got my keyway and my nut and my washer. I'm gonna zap that with a couple of duggas. And then we're gonna work on getting this whole fan shroud on. Cause if I do this right, I don't even have to take the fan apart. Perfect, there we go. We're gonna throw the recoil on it while we're right here. Starter now, I guess. This thing is slowly starting to get heavier. All right, so for the starter, I just wanna tear it apart, make sure that if it's dirty, we just kind of get some of the, the easy dust out of it. And uh, if the brushes are broke or something like that, then at least then we'll be able to see. The brushes actually look pretty decent on this. So they're pretty tall still. So I'm not worried about those. I do want to try to get everything cleaned up a little bit. Just kind of wipe it off. All right, while I have it off, I want to try to lube up this piece here because it just feels sticky. So I want to just kind of spray a little WD-40 on it and work it, see if I can get it kind of lubed up. There it goes. I'm pretty happy with that. Ta-da! That took like 45 minutes. That was way longer than I thought. All right, so now we gotta stick the motor mount on. And I don't remember how it went like that, I guess. The exhaust now, and then, yeah, and then the fan shroud. This did come with new exhaust gaskets. We're gonna pop these out. There's just a great big recess in here. That's gonna pop in there. I wanna try to make sure I draw these down evenly so I squish that gasket evenly. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but really it's kind of horseshoe shaped. I can see more of a gap in the middle here and the outsides of these flanges are almost touching. I can't do much more about that. We've got those in a tight, so that should be good. Now this right here was for the boost bottles on the, the carb boots. We're gonna make sure that goes on there this way. There's this plastic tab thing right here and that needs to go inside there. There's another one on the other side up over there. All right, let's shove our bolts in, snug those up. Pop our spark plug caps back on. All right, so let's grab the motor mounts. Might as well throw the, throw the boost bottle on it too. We got this engine bracket here. And according to the micro fish, it goes on there this way, which looks kind of goofy, but I guess that's it. All right, so that's pretty snug. Now we're gonna spin this around, do the other motor mount. All right, now this is the motor mount that broke. This is the whole reason we did all this was because of this. We've got another motor mount. This one looks like it's been fixed before in the same spot. So I wonder if this is kind of a notorious thing for these. So this one's gonna go on here this way. We got two things still. We gotta look at this, this other clutch and see if that'll work. And then we need to uh, clean the carbs. Then we can stick the motor back in it. So we're gonna slide the motor off and let's get the clutch up here. This clutch here is the old one. 
And this is the one that's cracked right here. You can see it on this side here too. This is the clutch off the, the spare sled and the clutch looks like it's not broken. So that's a good start. I don't know how wore out it is though. So we are going to uh, attempt to make sure that this is good enough to function for the kids. First thing I'm probably gonna do is make sure the bolts at least look the same, at least have the same thread and the same length, I guess. So the old one is longer. The threads are the same and they're threaded the same length, but I bet the clutches are, is this clutch taller than that one? Yeah, I don't know how well you can see that, but uh, it is longer. I'd say that's about the difference in the length of bolts. We're gonna continue on. The one thing I wanna keep my eye on is when I screw the bolt down in, I wanna make sure that this crush washer does flatten out and it's not loose still. So to kind of check this thing out, we're gonna pop these six screws off so we can relieve this spring pressure in here. And then I can feel these ramps and rollers. All right, sometimes there's timing marks on these just because they're weighted. So I think what we're gonna do is I'm going to Sharpie mark like right here, and then we're gonna Sharpie mark this right here. So at least we can put it back together the same way and we don't lose the orientation of the face plate. I'm just gonna put a nice heavy black mark there, a black mark there, there. So those will line back up that way and we should be in good shape. So these ramps in here, I wanna make sure there's not a whole bunch of play in them. There's a little bit. And then I wanna kind of feel this surface right here and make sure it doesn't feel like there's any big divots or flat spots in it. And that one feels pretty good. Now this roller right here, I wanna make sure there's no flat spots in that and that it looks good and round all the way around. Make sure it's not super sloppy. And I'm gonna do that for all three of these. This clutch actually feels pretty decent. Make sure it moves good. Well, I'm happy enough with that. We're gonna stick our spring back on, find our Sharpie mark, which is right here. I just looked over at the motor and I realized that this part of the clutch right here rides inside the seal on here. I gotta make sure that that and this are both the same diameter on this. So the old one, two inch 62 thou. The new one, a two inch 61 thou. All right, yep, so for all intents and purposes, they are the same. We're gonna grease the outside of this where that seal goes and then we're gonna put it on. All right, well, it feels like it's grabbing. So that's read it in there by hand quite a ways. And now it is touching the, it's touching the washer. I think this clutch will work fine. I'm gonna give her some mugga duggas, send it home. I'm looking back in here right now and it looks like I got good clearance everywhere. I think that's good to go. All right, so we got the carbs laying here. It's uh, gonna be kind of easy to not mix these up because this side here has a throttle linkage. So I'm gonna write over here, just link. And then I know that the throttle linkage goes on this side. So this is the carb body with the linkage on it. First thing I'm gonna do is probably take these fuel screws out and uh, we gotta count the turns on those. So we got to so we'll go one half, one, just past one. So I'm gonna go one plus, just because I know that that was a fat one turn. And do same thing for this side. One half, one, same thing here. So just over one turn. All right, a lot of time fuel screws have uh, washers and O-rings on the tip of the needle. These ones do not though, because most of the time fuel screws are on the bottom of the carbs, but these are some weird carbs. I don't even know who makes these. These are the Makunis. <laughs> well, they're not a traditional carb, so that's why there's no uh, washer or O-ring on that. So now we're ready to flip her upside down. We gotta take both of these caps off. All right, so those are 17s. Jesus. All right. So we got a crush washer under there. There's a little bit of garbage down in there, but it's not terrible. You always wanna clean carbs when you tore a motor all the way apart because you don't wanna do all this work to the motor and then have a simple dirty carburetor give you a runnability issue that you can't figure out. Just clean it and then not have to worry. Just pulling all our little pieces and parts out. Pull these seats out. There's the emulsion tube down in here. All right, there's two rubber plugs here. I'll pop both of those out. Now there's the pilot jets down in there. I need a small screwdriver for that. Well, I think that's about it. Now we're gonna get some carburetor cleaner and we're gonna just start blowing out all the orifices on everything on the carb bodies. And then we're gonna do the same thing for all the jets and we're gonna put them back together.
All right, now I'm gonna take the air gun and I'm gonna blow out everything I just blew out with carburetor cleaner. All right, so those are clean. Now just one jet at a time, we're gonna start putting everything back together. Probably start with the emulsion tube here. I like to spray it out with carburetor cleaner and then air, and then look down every hole in the jet and make sure the holes look good and round, like there's no gunk in them. And then we're just gonna start putting them back together. All right, so the seat here, I'm gonna kind of spray out. Get some of the gunkies out. Then I'm gonna grab some steel wool. And I've already used this steel wool lots of times on other ones. But I'm gonna stick this in here and we're gonna spin it. And this is gonna polish the seat. And once that's done, we're gonna spray it out again. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's much shinier. Not only just this outside face, but down inside there. You need that to be clean so that uh, it can work properly and shut the gas flow off. I'm gonna put our little plastic plugs back in. As far as I can tell, they're Identical. Now in this, this plug here that held the cap on or the bowl on, there's your main jet is actually screwed inside of this. So I'm going to unscrew these. I'm gonna separate them so that I can clean them. All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna spray out this body here first. All right, so that looks pretty clean now. Do the same thing here with the main jet. All right, I'm gonna screw those back together. All right, so that's ready to go back on last. Now I'm gonna take my needle here and make sure the tip is clean. If it's not clean, then I might spin it around in the steel wool here a little bit just to kind of polish it up. But as long as it looks good and shiny everywhere, it should be all right. Drop that down in there. Stick my float down in. Slide my pin in. I'm gonna scrub the bowl out here quick. Put that back on. Make sure this bowl is good and centered. You can tell just by feeling it if it's sitting on that O-ring foley or not. All right, now we got this screw here, the fuel screw. I'm gonna kind of wipe the tip off, stick it in here. Now we're gonna thread it all the way down so it stops, then we're gonna back it out one turn. All right, so that's stopped. So we're gonna go one half turn, one full turn, and then just a little bit. So this half of the carb now is done. I'm gonna do this whole side off camera, but then we're ready to go under the hood. All right, I don't know how much of, your, how much of my ass you're gonna get in this shot, but... Uh, I think we're ready to set this down in here. All right. There. Hey, that's pretty close to home. Good. There. There, there, there. Good. All right, so one of the first things I wanna do, just because it's gonna be a bitch, is the, the uh, starter wire. I gotta get that plugged in. And I can't even see it, let alone try to get it in there. I can see the starter. That's about the extent of it. You know, it might be easier if I pop this cover back off. So now I can see down in between the Y-pipe and I can see that actually pretty well. All right, now there is a ground wire that goes on the other side. So let's go get that fished on. All right, so right down here, we've got the ground wire and I just put that on the recoil there. I just had technical difficulties, but uh, we just got that on there. Now, I think we wanna go to the, the back of the motor because we've got a lot back there we gotta do. All right, so I got these two oil lines. They both are looking a little rough. From my research, I don't think it matters which line goes to which one on the tank. I'm pretty sure on the tank side, they're just a bung into the tank. So the pump will do whatever it needs to. All right, so there's the easy one. Where the hell's the hard one at? I think I'm gonna move. I'm gonna block this motor up. So that's up. I'm gonna go under the motor mount. Oh yeah, this, this old line was junk. I put vice grips on it and it completely flattened the line. All right, it's got one of these like springy connectors or the uh, springy protectors. So I'm gonna take and slide that down by the motor mount. I think that's where that should go. Um, I think I'm gonna button up some of the wiring back here. So I just plugged in the stator and the coil. I almost think this lower line doesn't go like that. I think I like that better. So right now, that back line I have coming up around the motor mount here with that coily doodad on there to protect it. And then this easier one here is going up and I'm going up to this loop behind the steering stem. I think we're gonna do the old swap roo right, So I just got the clamp off that oil line. Well, here goes nothing. Shit, that wasn't so bad. One more to do. Oh shit, that came all the way off. Shit, 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 shit. Damn it. 
it on there. Okay, well, I guess I didn't think about it, but now my oil lines are leaking oil. That wasn't that bad. I finished pushing them on and uh, put some zippy ties on it. All right, so I ran uh, two new primer lines here. We go up to the bottom of the carb right there. We got one fuel line here and one fuel line here. I did run a new vacuum hose for the fuel pump, but I'm not replacing the fuel lines because they look all right. Got the new carb boot in, so that's on. That one was healthy still. I think I'm to the point to where I want to start putting the carbs on. All right, let's snug them clamps up quick. Let's get the chokes put in here. Choke cables are in. And then we got the uh, throttle cable. Right, so I'm gonna kind of check the, the throttle free play here a little bit. That's about how much free play I got in there. So I'm not actually pulling the cable there. That's just the slop in the cable. You want enough, like, you want to be able to like stick a dime in there. So as long as you can kind of fit a, a dime in there, then you've got enough throttle free play. All right, now we got the oil pump cable we got to put on. All right, so we got that started, but we need to figure out where we actually want the oil pump set at when the throttle's at idle. So I had to YouTube this because I don't have a manual for this. The way to set the oil pump on this is you need to measure the gap from the top of this here to the bottom there and that needs to be seven eighths of an inch. So if I wanna turn the oil, oil pump up a little bit, I wanna make this that gap a little smaller. And if I want less oil, I wanna make that gap a little bigger. Well, if anything, I want it, the gap to be a touch smaller than seven eighths of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is I got a little six inch scale here. I'm just gonna line up a solid inch mark at the top of that, pull that all the way up. All right, so right now, we're pretty close to a full inch, so that means we're kind of light. It's gotta come way out. I like that right there. And uh, I was just looking at this. I haven't put any motor mounts on yet, and I really need to do that before I can't get to this back one anymore. All right, so we got this little hooky doodad we gotta put in here before I really do much else. So this thing goes in here, just hooks up here on the motor mount, then goes back here in this little eyelet. Now these motor mounts aren't really adjustable, so I'm not super terribly worried about the belt alignment right now. I'm hoping it kind of just falls right back in where it was. So we're running all these home as we get them in. All right, so I ended up getting everything buttoned back up. Uh, I got the fuel lines put on, the boost bottle, the fan shrouds, the exhaust. It's all put back together, the belts on it, clutches are on it. Now, because we had everything tore apart in the oil pump and we replaced the oil lines and stuff, like the whole oil injection system is bone dry. And this is a fresh motor. I mean, even without being fresh motor, the whole oil injection system being dry is a problem. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this vacuum tank and we're gonna suck all the gas out of it that's in it. And then I've got a one gallon of 32 to one premix right here. And we are going to put that in here. So the only gas that'll be in it is gonna be premix. And then hopefully by the time it's done running that gallon, we will have the oil pump working well. We're gonna get it fired up and then we're gonna keep our eye on the oil lines that go up into the, up into the, the intake boots and make sure those look like they're starting to fill up. So that's game plan. So let's get this thing fired up and let's start sucking out the gas. All right, now this bone dry, we're gonna put some gas in it. All right, now luckily for me, this thing's got electric start, so I don't have to pull my balls off. Let's make sure the starter works since we had that apart. It's gonna watch the gas line while it turns over. Was quick. I got some gas dripping. Maybe just the float sticking a little, I hope. Doesn't really look like it's leaking anymore, maybe. I've noticed sometimes cleaning carbs that the, when you clean everything and it's dry, when you put it back together the first time, sometimes the needle likes to stick. I don't see it leaking anymore. It sounds pretty good, actually. I would like to do one heat cycle on this right now. So I would like it to be I'd like it to run a little longer. All right, well, 
we gotta fix a gas leak, but it runs pretty damn good. All right, so I'm gonna see if maybe we can do a quick and dirty on this, because it's this outside carburetor. No, one of the rubber plugs fell out. Well, I think what I'm gonna have to do is pop the fuel line off of this, put another piece of fuel line on it, and try to see if it's actually shutting off the fuel. I'll kind of explain that here in a second. All right, so what I did is I've got a piece of fuel line here and it runs over here just to this carb. And uh, what I'm gonna do is when the float is down, see how it's down right now and I can push it up or down, up or down. All right, when it's down, I should be able to breathe through this. I should be able to blow air through it. And then I should be able to take my finger and lift up on the float and then that should make it so I can't push any more through here. So if I leave it down, okay, I'm gonna blow through it. I can blow through it all day. And I'm gonna take and push it up and try again, nothing. Right about there is where it starts to break the seal and I can blow through it. The only other thing it could be would be the float bowl. Maybe where the seal rides, it was uh, leaking there. So I like that. We're gonna make sure that this fuel bowl goes on here good and seats in that, that uh, O-ring that's up in there. Tighten this back up. And then I think I'm just gonna take the belt the rest of the way off of this and not put the secondary clutch on and fire it up. Let it sit here and idle and see if it leaks again. Well, it helps if you put the fuel line on, I guess. I think I'm gonna have to let this air out for a little bit because that was a lot of gas. All right, it's been about 15 minutes and it's dried up quite a bit. I do have the fuel line on here. So uh, let's not try that again. Hopefully this doesn't leak. Nope, it's leaking again. All right, so I just got the carbs off and I, I noticed something, so I wanna kind of show you guys. My oil lines down here were still empty. The ones that come from the bottom of the tank that go into the oil pump. And then I was kind of thinking like, well, maybe that oil pump shouldn't run dry. So I'm kind of priming it right now to do that. I'm going in here, I'm popping the line off and then I'm letting the oil gravity feed through it. I'm pinching it off at the last second, sticking it back under here. And then at least makes sense to me that uh, now they're much more primed and maybe we can get some uh, oil flowing through this. Cause this yellow line here has a little bit of something in it, but that green one back there is completely bone dry. Let's try this one. Okay, that's right. So these stupid Yamahas barely oil anything at idle. So you have to give it throttle in order for it to actually oil. I'm holding that throttle wide open and cranking it. All right, we're gonna give a starter a break. Um, I'm gonna keep doing that off and on while we look at these carbs. So uh, we give the starter a chance to cool off but I think we've got the oil pump primed and really if we were to just run this, it should work all the air bubbles out with the premix in it. That makes me feel a lot better. Now back onto the carbs leaking. I might've found what the issue was. The O-ring where the, the bowl seats up against, it had one spot, I don't know, maybe that long that was like half kind of I don't even know, it was goofy looking. So I took the O-ring out, I flipped it upside down and I got it worked back in the groove and it looks pretty even. So this is an umbilical tank. I'll have uh, links for this down below, but it's on an IV stand and it works super good for uh, bench tests and stuff or just running stuff that doesn't have a gas tank. But we're gonna bench test this with actual gas, with an actual fluid. So I've got it all put back together. I've got gas in this. We're gonna turn this valve on and see if it starts to leak. And my carb angle isn't terrible. That's about how it would be angled in the sled this way. We're basically hoping that this doesn't leak. It's not leaking. I just tipped a carburetor all the way upside down to make sure there's actually gas in it and it did leak out of the overflow. So I tipped it back up and no leaks. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna stick the carbs back on it and we'll get it fired up again. All right, so we're gonna start this thing pretty much naked. I'm not gonna put the fan shroud on it. Pretty much everything's out of the way. Should be good to run. Let's see uh, how it goes, I guess. Watch the other carbs start leaking now. All right, so this is gonna be the first start under its own power completely, and hopefully it uh, doesn't 
leak gas. I'm leaving this open just so I can make sure it doesn't leak gas, but I got all the way put back together. I've got the battery in it from two years ago. I don't know if it's good or not, so hopefully it fires up with that. We're just gonna do one more check to make sure it's not leaking fuel, and then we're gonna stick it outside and we're gonna go right around the yard with a flashlight. Looks good, let's take it outside. We're gonna not take it out and run it balls to the walls right now, but we're gonna take it down the field. It is March 2nd, it's today is 2nd, no, March 3rd. So it's March 3rd, most of the time we have two or three feet of snow right now, but it has been stupid warm. We are going to go take it down the edge of the field and come back. I'm gonna be holding you, so I'm gonna be driving with one hand. Let's go take this for a quick spin. There, oh, there's also no headlight on this. I'm gonna put a flashlight on the bill of my hat. All right. So there's my headlight, it's, my, it's on my head. This thing runs pretty shitty actually. So when I was trying to make it quit leaking gas, I noticed that it was missing one of these rubber things that go up in the uh, next to the emulsion tube. And I made a mental note of it and forgot all about it because I was more worried about getting it to quit leaking. And that's probably gonna make it run super rich. I'm pretty sure I dropped this down inside the motor when I pulled this off that last time. But uh, luckily uh, my buddy doesn't live very far from me. He, he's got two extra sets of carbs. So I just pulled an extra rubber plug out of there. I'm gonna make sure both of those get in the carb, put the bowl back on it. And uh, we're gonna take it back outside and see if it runs any better. All right, so I just dropped another one. So I, uh, I just put grease around the sides of that where it goes in and tried to not get any on the end. So hopefully this will hold in there. So this one here, it's got a little bit of grease on it. I'm gonna stick it up in here. I'm just gonna, I put it up in there and I'm just gonna kind of see if it's gonna fall out. Make sure it's still up in there. Got my finger on it. There, now it can't really fall out. Get my main jet screwed up in here. Hoping it don't start leaking gas again. Feels good. Let's snug this up. All right, both oil lines are full of oil too, so it's definitely gonna run a little rich. All right, so it's not leaking gas, which is good, so we're gonna throw a secondary and belt back on it. swap turned into a full engine rebuild which turned into a leaky carburetor slash I'm a dumbass and lost the parts but uh, we now have a uh, phaser that does not blow belts and runs pretty good so all right guys so I told my buddy that I could have had this whole job done in like a decent day if I just got after it I did get sick for like a week week and a half it's like three weeks later probably i got it done the whole thing i was banking on was i was going to take a running motor and i was going to tear it apart swap the top end and crank and just throw it right on the other side of cases it was just going to be a pull the motor out swap it over quick and then throw it back together but we got it make sure you check out the links down below in the description i've got a patreon check that out uh post behind the scenes stuff check out my website I've got apparel there for sale, and uh, I've got a vintage power sports show coming up in June of 2024. If you're on the east, northeast coast, or 
I guess, near Lake Erie, then, uh, and you got something vintage, uh, make sure you check out that Vintage Power Sports show because it's going to happen this summer. But uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Till next time, peace.